Hey, I'm Heather Carrick. I'm a senior research engineer at the Autodesk Applied Research Lab here at the Pier 9 Workshop. The workshop is one of our many technology centers around the world, and we've got some really cool machines and a lot of really great products going on inside, and I'd love to show you around. This is our CNC room. CNC stands for Computer Numerically Controlled, so every machine here has a computer and software attached to it that tells each part of the tool how to move, how fast to move, and where to go. Our largest piece of equipment here is our water jet. The water jet is basically like any other kind of 2D cutting tool, like you might be familiar with a laser cutter. It's very similar, but instead of using a laser, it uses a high-powered jet of water with garnet dust, which is the same stuff that's found on sandpaper mixed in. So yeah, it can cut through up to a foot, a foot thick material, up to steel even, uh, and it can cut brittle things like glass and marble, and it can cut things that might be unsafe to cut in, a, in something like a laser cutter like PVC because it won't release any toxic fumes. Another one of our large pieces of equipment is the DMS 5-axis mill. Uh, this mill we use to cut foam, wood, and it can do softer, softer metals like aluminum. Um, it's five axes, so we can do X, Y, Z, and then B and C, which are two different rotations. This allows us to cut kind of more complicated shapes, cool curvy things, um, undercuts, so cutting underneath something on this machine. It's used for furniture, it's often used for foam that can be used as a mold for something, um, such as filling it with resin, or for laying uh, things like carbon fiber. So one of the most commonly used pieces of equipment in this room is probably this three-axis mill. It's a Haas three-axis uh, CNC, and it can cut through all sorts of metals, but it's usually here, we usually use it for aluminum and steel. Um, so the way a mill works, it's a lot like the, the DMS that we showed before, but this one is used usually for smaller pieces of equipment um, and with, with harder steels than, the, than that big mill. Uh, so yeah, you can cut things like this, where you have uh, your spinning tool, they can go in these XYZ profiles and come through and cut through pockets. Uh, so yeah, we've got a table full of really cool examples of, of items that were made on this machine. So they're made, they're, we have steel, we have aluminum. Uh, and for, for a CNC, you might make your final item, but you might also make a tool that you need to make another object. So uh, injection molds are often made on a CNC mill out of aluminum. Uh, or other fixtures that you might need in order to, to do things like a part flip. You might need to make a piece of equipment on this mill in order to let you make this, this part finally. So those are really common uses for, for a, a piece of machinery like this. So if you want to take a closer look at what's going on in here, what's going on with this mill is we have a tool like this loaded into this tall vertical guy. And it spins really, really quickly. And this tool is really sharp. So it spins quickly and then starts plunging in and moving around. But uh, all of that white stuff is called coolant. So we have high-speed steel, usually, or carbide uh, for our tool, touching up against, against more steel or aluminum. And that can get to be really, really hot. And when things get hot, it will dull your tool, which will cause you problems. And it can also um, cause uh, the metal to warp and various things to break. The Matsura behind me is a five-axis CNC mill. It can do everything the three-axis mill we just looked at can do, plus a lot more. A great thing about five-axis machines and mills in general is that you're not only making the final piece of equipment, but you might also be making a lot of really cool fixturing that never, never gets to see the light of day often. Um, one of my favorite examples is this D20 die that Lee, who's right behind me, made. So it's a 20-sided cage with a 20-sided die inside. And the way he made it, it started out as a piece of stock, a lot like this, just a blank piece of aluminum that he was able to clamp into the machine and machine away the top and the sides and even a little bit underneath of the die. In a 3-axis machine, that would have taken a lot of operations and a lot of part flips to be able to get to each of those pieces. So after just the first set of cuts, it looked a lot like this. But now, how do you cut away the rest of this? He needed a way to hold on to this die in the mill. So he had to come up with a fixture. So we designed and machined this fixture. So there's little keyed pieces that have little cutouts that fit inside the holes of the cages. 
and that can lock into that can lock the die in place. And otherwise, it's got a rectangular base that can fit really nicely in a normal clamp. So, when it was all clamped up, it looked like this. You was able to load that in the machine and finish off the last bit of operations to finish the die. Uh, so, in the CNC room, we saw a CNC lathe and a CNC mill. These are sort of the, the parents of those. So we've got a manual lathe and a manual mill. So these do not have computers controlling them. It's really good for someone that wants to get into machining to start with a manual machine so they understand kind of what's going on before moving off to the CNC so you have a better understanding of what to tell the computer what to do. So this one's the mill. Um, so we've got our own version of those tool collets. So you can load your, your tool in here, put it in here, it'll spin really fast. And then you've got all of these knobs for moving the, the material left and right and up and down. Um, so it's, uh, you have to pay a lot more attention to exactly how, how you're going. And it's really hard to do any particularly complicated curvy shape here because you've got to be dialing both of these, both these tables at, at the same time. Um, so yeah, this is where having a really good CAD drawing and then really good engineering drawings of your project can be really essential. Um, and then the lathe is, the again, the manual version. So you can load. You load your piece of material, so usually like a round piece of aluminum or something, in here, and then this engine will spin it really quickly. And then here you can turn these knobs to move your cutter, which is just a little blade, in and out and left and right. So while this is spinning, you might go this way and this way in order to get various uh, amounts of material shaved off to make something kind of like that chest piece. digital manufacturing room where we have 3D printers and laser cutters. Um, but the machines themselves are pretty much boxes. Let's look at the cool stuff that they make. So these shelves can show off a lot of the things that 3D printing and laser cutting are really, really good at and really exceptional at and can show off the kind of the different capabilities of the different kinds of technologies. So the um, object machine that does the, the SLS resin printing can make objects like this one, um, because it's using resin, you can end up with really high resolution prints, smaller than a, than a piece of hair as far as the, the resolution you can get away with. And the resin can have really nice properties, especially optical properties. So this is an optically clear resin. So people have actually printed lenses um, and uh, light pipes using, using this material. The paper printers can print really large objects, objects really inexpensively. This was printed in paper. And because it's paper and it's porous, it makes great um, vacuum forming. You don't have any pockets because all the air can escape through the paper. So you can end up with uh, these kind of cool, cool, large uh, and light prints uh, that you can then use to, to build off of. So in the electronics lab, you can design, test, and build pretty much any uh, electronics projects that you might need. Um, the project might be electronic all by itself, or it might go into something else, like a wearable or in some housing that you machined. Um, so here we've got power supplies, multimeters, um, different ways to kind of diagnose and, and look at what's going on in your circuit, along with all the breadboards, Arduinos, microcontrollers, uh, sensors, resistors that you might need to, to pull a project together. Um, so yeah, it's a great place to, to kind of nab a, nab a component that you might need and then to build well together and solder it. Uh, and what, if you like what you've made, we've even got the ability to, to put it all into software like one 3 d Circuits or Eagle and then get uh, proper printed boards actually made. Here we are inside the Applied Research Lab. This is where we uh, do a lot of research with emerging technology, such as robots, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, and machine learning. So uh, this is one of our, our newest robots. It still doesn't have a name yet. We're uh, taking suggestions. And uh, we've got an ABB IRB 6700 in the back, uh, which is doing a 3D printing with metal projects. That's where the MIG welding project I mentioned before. We have a MIG welder strapped to the robot uh, that's basically turned into a metal 3D printer. So here we get equipment like this robot. We come up with some cool projects uh, that we think are relevant for the future of how things are going to be designed and made. And we prototype out how we think uh, people in sort of factories of the future could assemble and make things. So we've done architectural projects, manufacturing projects, um, a little bit in media and entertainment, 
all kind of with these ways to suggest at a possible future so that we can help uh, talk to people both in our companies, uh, in our company and uh, people outside about what we think is important for what's coming next and what, uh, what we think needs to happen today in order to enable some cooler ways of building. Mm -hmm.